In this lesson, we look at what a Fisher projection is, the structures of the open chain form of sugars that I introduced to you on the previous slide, and how you draw a Fisher projection. So this is the most common way of drawing sugars to show stereochemistry without using dashes and wedges. Fisher projections are called Fisher projections because they were developed by the great chemist Emil Fisher, lived from 1852 to 1919. He was the father of carbohydrate chemistry and won the 1902 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for elucidating the three-dimensional structure of the simple sugars. So the way it works is that you start out by um, building a model of your sugar. Okay, so here's a model we've got if I open it up completely, we've got the aldehyde at carbon one, then carbon two, three, four, five, and six. Each one of those carbons has an OH group on it. So in order to get to the Fisher projection, we want to hold our model such that the aldehyde is at the top and the chain is totally eclipsed. Okay, so I'm going to rotate all of this, these bonds around so that we're in the eclipsed conformation. And as you can see, we are almost forming a ring. Okay, so this CH2OH on what's on the bottom and the aldehyde at the top, when you've made the correct model for a Fisher projection, it looks like it wants to form a five-member group, although obviously it doesn't. Okay, so then furthermore, you want to have the structure drawn so that the open ends, you see the open ends, are pointing away from you. Okay, so those are pointing behind me. And then on each of the four central carbons, so carbon two, three, four, and five, there are two groups pointing out towards you, one on the right, one on the right, and one on the left. Okay, so on each of these carbons, one of the groups is going to be an OH and the other one is going to be an H. So on carbon 2, the OH is pointing towards you to the right and the H is pointing towards you to the left. So if we were to draw the structure in this conformation using dashes and wedges, you would get something that looks like what's shown on the screen. Okay, so you can see that on carbon 2, we've got an H and an OH coming towards you. Um, carbon 3, we've got the OH on the left, the H on the right. We, I'm giving the carbon 3, carbon 4 bond a solid bond, but then you can see how the other carbon-carbon bonds are given dashes because they're pointing away from you, and the H's and the OH's are given wedges because they're pointing towards you. Now, if we represent all of the bonds at the carbons as being simple lines, instead of having dashes and wedges, then we have a Fisher projection. And that is shown now on the right-hand side of your screen. The, the three-dimensional structure in a Fisher projection is implied, therefore, rather than explicitly shown. So one of the skills that you will need to develop is being able to take a model and accurately turn it into a Fisher projection and also take a Fisher projection and be able to draw it out in an open chain form with all of the OHs properly indicated using dashes and wedges. Now note that the conformation used to construct the Fisher projection is not the lowest energy conformation. We are not trying to say that in the open chain form this sugar is going to eclipse up all the bonds. This is just the convention that Fisher came up with as an easy way to show stereochemistry at all of these carbons. So Fisher projections can also be used for smaller molecules. In fact, we can use them for molecules with only one stereocenter, and doing so reveals an important precaution that we have to take. Okay, so let's consider D-glyceraldehyde, so our simplest sugar, a three-carbon sugar. So in Fisher projection, um, 
we're going to have the aldehyde at the top, we're going to have the CH2OH at the bottom, and then on the central carbon, you have the OH pointing to the right and the H pointing to the left. As you can see, this is what we get from just taking three carbons, carbons one through three, off of my model of glucose. So if we take our Fisher projection, and I just want to be crystal clear about this, draw the structure with the stereochemistry explicitly shown. So the stereocenter is, is in the middle here. So the OH and the H are coming out towards you. The aldehyde and the CH2OH are going back away from you. That's good tetrahedral geometry there. And then if we take this and make it a more conventional bond line drawing, and usually with a conventional bond line drawing, we have everything in its most staggered conformation, it would end up looking like this. Okay, so we've got our aldehyde over here on the right side, then the central carbon with the stereocenter, note that the OH is going back away from you, and then carbon three is just the CH2, and I put the OH into the plane. Doesn't actually have to be. You can have free rotation about this bond. Okay, so I hope you could agree with me that the Fisher projection shown gives the conventional bond line drawing shown. So the next question we want to ask is, what would happen if we were to rotate this Fisher projection by 90 degrees? Is it the same molecule? Okay, so here's the Fisher projection rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. We've now got the OH on top, the aldehyde on the left, the CH2OH on the right, and the H on the bottom. So drawing this using dashes and wedges requires the following arrangement. The two things on the left and the right get wedges. The two things on the top and the bottom get dashes. Because the Fisher projection rules imply that the vertical lines are pointing away from you. So as a result, this operation actually results in inversion of configuration at the stereocenter and gives you the enantiomer of your original structure. Okay, this is easiest to see in the conventional bond line drawing where everything is shown explicitly. If you look at the structure that I drew first and the structure that I get now out of this rotation of the Fisher projection, I think you can see that these structures are in fact mirror images of each other. Okay, so to get to the structure on the bottom, if I'm gonna have the aldehyde on the left and the CH2OH on the right to get to this structure and still have the OH going back, I would have to take the ball off of one position, the OH ball off of the front position and put it back in to the back position. And whenever I take a ball off of one position on a carbon and put it back onto the other position, I am generating a stereoisomer. And because this is a molecule with one stereocenter, that stereoisomer is an enantiomer. Okay, so the upshot of this is you cannot rotate a Fisher projection by 90 degrees and maintain the same structure. You can rotate it by 180 degrees, but you cannot rotate it by 90 degrees, otherwise you would end up with the enantiomer. Luckily, if we are just using Fisher projections for the six carbon sugars, there's not gonna be a strong temptation to rotate them 90 degrees in this unit. Although we are going to come back to using Fisher projections when we talk about amino acids, and since they have only one stereocenter, we do have to watch out for this. Okay, so that's Fisher projections in a nutshell. And then in the next video, as promised, we will come back and look in a little more detail at what D and L are.